Looking ahead to gardening and landscaping, we welcome our expert Carson Arthur to the program who has six tips to achieving a picture perfect lawn so you can keep up with the Joneses. Not that anyone's judging, right? Right, because the front lawn is not the space that everybody sees when they walk by all the time, right? Exactly. Hide everything in the back, but the front lawn, you need to look good. It does need to look good. So let's start with what we know about Calgary. So in Calgary, we have really two types of grasses, and most Calgarians blend them. So Kentucky bluegrass is the predominant type of grass that we see in our front yards yep. with a little bit of uh, fescue mix. In, okay? okay. What we know about Kentucky bluegrass is it only roots four to six inches into the soil, right? But it spreads horizontally really well. So it, it fills the empty patches, mm -hmm. which is why we use it. It also has that perfect green look. Okay. Okay. But because it's so shallow, we have to take care of it a special way. Hmm. All right. And that's what we tend to get wrong. We think, oh, we can just, you know, rely on a few things like Mother Nature to look after the lawn force, and that's not actually true. Okay. Okay. So we're coming into the time when everybody starts their first cutting. Yes. And they want to cut the grass and they want to make it look perfect because it's sort of green right now. When you set your lawnmower for the first height, the first time you do it, you only want to take off one third of the grass. Okay. Okay. So lawnmowers like this Black and Decker version here have a height measurement on the side, and hopefully you can see that. Oh, that's yeah. smart. So it sets the, the height setting. For the summer, you want to keep your grass at about two and a half inches tall. So for this first cutting, set it at three inches, because most of the lawns right now are above three inches. Mm. Right? So you're going to cut it, first cutting, three inches tall, and it's going to make a nice clean cut off the top, but it's going to promote healthier root growth down below. Okay. Is it time to cut? We have snow not that long. Yeah, ago. you can start cutting grass now. If your grass is looking long and bushy and healthy, cut the grass. Okay. Absolutely. The other thing that people always ask about is should they put the real the bagger on it? Yes. Now we know studies are showing that the actual thatch that builds up uh, inhibits new growth. So I always say for the first mow of the year, put the bag on the back, collect the clippings. From that point onwards, let the clippings fall in the yard because they actually feed the grass for the rest of the summer and they help protect it during drought oh. and hot periods. Okay. They shade the roots below. Okay, so first cutting, put the bag on, and then you're done. Okay, and then take it off for the rest of the year, let the clippings fall down. Awesome. When we're talking about feeding your grass, yes. because it's only in a four to six inch depth, Every year that your lawn's been in place, it's uh, robbing the nutrients from the soil in that space, okay. just in that little patch. Mm -hmm. So feeding the lawn is so important. So we're starting to see more and more companies uh, introducing organic feeders. Ah. Because organic feeders don't have to end up in the water table. And this is what fertilizer looks like. Now, all, not all fertilizers are built the same. So you can't assume that, you know, you've done it one way all the time, it's just going to work for you. Right. This one, you have to follow instructions to make sure that you don't get burned. Organic fertilizers tend to burn the grass. So you have to be very careful in the way you distribute it. You can't just go out and spread it. Follow the instructions very closely. But it is very important that you feed your lawn right now. Okay. Okay? So this is the detail that will have you not have those burn patches. Exactly. <laughs> Pay attention okay. to it. Great. Also, we talk a lot about watering. Watering is a big deal because we have brownout periods. Mm -hmm. Like we have periods where you're not supposed to be watering. So you want to conserve as much water as possible. I'm going to pick this up so you can see it. This That's familiar. has been the traditional waterer in uh, Calgary and in Canada for years and years and years. Yes. Guess what? It's not horrible. Not the case anymore. It's a horrible option. And the reason why is when we're talking about conserving water, because this spreads the water so high up, we get more evaporation out of this. So less water droplets actually get to the grass. Mm. And we want the water in the grass, not evaporating in the air around us. So a better option instead of that one is to go with this type of sprinkler. I'll pick this, this up amazing. so you can see it. I love it. Yeah. Now these, you see them in golf courses and they do the ch 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 right? We have dance moves based on that, right? <laughs> this type of sprinkler. Thank you for doing the sprinkler this yeah, morning. There you I go. appreciate that. Respect. <laughs> this type of sprinkler sprays out larger droplets. Larger water droplets mean longer time to evaporate. So more of the water actually gets to the roots of the grass. Right. So it preserves the lawn a little bit longer, but you're using less water because you're actually more effective with it. Mm. We know in Calgary, for a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, you only need to water about an inch to an inch and a half per week. Right. So if we get rain, yep. That's going to do the or job snow. for you. Or, well, yes, if the snow melts, you will get some evaporate or some uh, water into the roots, sure. but this will do the job for you. Okay. Perfect. Do we have time for one more? We do. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, getting the thatch off the ground. We're always told, you know, if we've got bat bare patches at this time of year, you start to see the really beige stuff, right? Mm. That's growing through and it's kind of inhibiting all the grass. We're going to talk about top dressing. Okay. So when you're putting down new seed, yes. you need to make sure that the seed has soil contact. The seed is not going to grow if it doesn't actually touch the soil. Right. So what I always say is take one bag of seed, mix it with one bag of topsoil in a wheelbarrow, spread that anywhere you want on the lawn because you've actually created the seed to soil contact, water it, you're going to get new grass. Smart. Easy. Easy. Picture perfect lawn. Thanks to Carson Arthur this morning. I was taking notes. Uh, I learned new things. Andrew Schultz, how about you?